All parents want their children to reach their fullest potential, be happy, healthy, valued, and contributing members of society. When parents find out their baby has Down syndrome, feelings of fear, confusion, and isolation can accompany those dreams. Founded in 1998, the Down Syndrome Connection is the only organization in the Bay Area serving the unique needs of people of all ages with Down syndrome and their families. They offer hope. When Blair was born in 1977, I reached out to another organization that saved my life and really was there to help me understand the journey of Down syndrome. I knew there were a lot of families out there that still needed help. I co-founded the Down Syndrome Connection now known as the Down Syndrome Connection of the Bay Area. A lot of what we do is connecting parents to parents, fielding phone calls and emails and uh, in-person drop-ins, and helping them with issues ranging from helping a new parent with nursing challenges to helping a parent with navigating the educational system and even the medical system. When we moved here three years ago, we were very nervous, but when we found the Down Syndrome Connection of the Bay Area, it was a huge gift. Um, we were able to find therapists and recreational opportunities. He made friends. It was like one-stop shopping for all of the things that he needed. We go into classrooms and educate students and classmates about their peer with Down Syndrome. Uh, I feel that if you don't talk about a subject, it implies that it's to be, that it's a negative subject, that it's not to be discussed. We don't discuss things that might be hard or bad or challenging. Down syndrome is not a bad thing. It might be a challenging thing from time to time, but really what it can do is open up the doors for new perspectives, new learning, and relationships. As I began to hear more people's stories, I realized there were some a lot worse than mine and so many like mine where there was no congratulations, no he's beautiful, just this, oh here's the problems. So we were googling on our phones and finding all kinds of awful things and wondering what the future was going to be like. And then we took him home and started talking to more people, started talking to people at the Down Syndrome Connection, talking to other parents and realized that our life was going to be just like our life was before. You know, I think it starts with the parents and the families and the involvement that they have with each other. That fosters the friendships and the uh, feeling of, of belonging and the feeling of community. It just sort of evolves from that. And, and um, I think it's a, it's a place where you not only can get support and encouragement and understanding it's also a place where you develop friends and relationships. Once we found out about the Down Syndrome Connection, we, uh, it, was, it was really a they're very easy going to talk to and just feeling at ease. Um, I, I know first coming in, you, you have all these ideas of what your child can't do. And as technology changes and education changes and the internet gets better, and um, all the decades of research come into play that um, Down Syndrome Connection, they, they organize it all for you. I really wish we had known about the charity ahead of time. It would have made the expectations and transition from being a parent with one expectation to being a parent who's going to be raising a child with Down Syndrome a lot easier. It's like whenever we meet a family that has a child with Down Syndrome, we get excited to meet that child and we're so excited to tell them about the Down Syndrome connection. I'm like, you have to give them a call because they've just been there for us and you know we want to be able to help other people. My grandson was born unexpectedly with Down Syndrome. Um, I uh, decided to uh, contact the Down Syndrome Connection. I made a phone call that evening. The next morning I received a phone call uh, from one of the staff and that just opened up so many um, uh, answers for us. What the group has done was, you know, it, it brought me in touch with people that are experiencing what we were experiencing. It showed me how to live through that and what I could expect and what, you know, how to handle certain situations. I found a strength here. You know, not only did I find a group of people that I could turn to, I found a source of strength and answers. It's, it's just been life-changing. Um, so many of the things that the kids uh, are learning are just so specific to their needs. And it's, it's like no other program that we've ever 
um, experience. They kind of give a, a quick synopsis of who Mason is, what what, what he work, what works best for him, what doesn't work for him, and um, we can't do that as parents. I mean, we can try. We know Mason better than anyone, but that program puts together a, a book that they basically hand off to everyone that's going to work with Mason at the school, his aide, his teachers, and um, it's uh, it's life changing. We realized that that our children are spending countless hours in the school system and that they were, they were falling through the gaps. Educators weren't necessarily knowing the best practices for educating children with Down syndrome. And what we realized is that of course they didn't know how to do that. It was of no fault of their own. It was because those educators hadn't been provided the same opportunity to learn that information, the learning profile of a student with Down syndrome, what the research-based best practices are for supporting a child with Down syndrome in the school system, what kinds of communication supports are available, how to include children with Down syndrome in regular education classes. Just because you can't speak, it doesn't mean you don't have anything to say. And at the Down Syndrome Connection, we're very proud to offer technology to children, teens, and adults with Down syndrome. They are just like everyone else. They just want to express themselves. So Nico participated in the readiness program for two years, two summers. He learned to use a GoTalk, which is a board that does talking for him, and it had four basic commands, which were yes, no, I have to go to the bathroom, I'm hungry. And it made all the difference in Nico's world. Our biggest achievement and biz biggest success was Nico said his name for the very first time. It was worth every year that he didn't and it was worth every penny of money we spent for speech therapy and every minute of driving time. It was, um, it was a big deal. In oral placement therapy, what we do is we help children feel how to place their lips, their tongue, their jaw for the production of speech sounds. It's not easy for Ainsley to retract her lip like that on her own, but when we prep the movement first, and then we go into speech, then she's able to do it better. We saw that her verbal communication spiked within just a couple of weeks of participating. Um, I remember sitting there one Sunday morning looking at the newspaper and um, she was eating breakfast next to me and um, all of a sudden she was commenting on every picture uh, and almost to the point that I had to tell her to just <laughs> stop talking. I was trying to read the paper. Do you want to say hi to everybody? Hi everybody. <laughs> so at school they wanted her, Rachel, they said they would be interested in ha her having a talker for when there was a communication breakdown. So the school started uh, the application process, which took almost two years before Rachel saw the talker from the school. But the Down Center Connection um, has a lending program and they actually lended Rachel the talker as soon as the school asked for it. She is who she is because the Down Center Connection came right next to us, helped me. They've been to IEP meetings. They've talked with the district about Rachel being fully included, the importance of that happening in our neighborhood school, how important it is for her to go to school with her siblings. You know, they're experts on Down syndrome and students with Down syndrome, um, but they're also a resource in terms of brainstorming and materials, and it really does take a collective group to be able to make progress with students and to, to know um, of a resource and, and people that are experts in that area that can work with experts in education is what helps us make such strong progress with our students. Now they're starting to um, support the teachers. So that's made a huge impact on Rachel's um, her education because like I said, her teachers are coming to the Down Syndrome Connection for seminars and training um, and that has made a huge difference. Working with them these teenagers with Down syndrome every day has been a really meaningful and fun experience for me, especially since they're my own age. And so I really get to um, connect with them and it's, I think it's given me a, an understanding of all different types of people and um, their abilities, talents, and just personalities and um, qualities that I didn't necessarily see before. We've been dancing a lot, we're doing arts and crafts a lot. It's a fun idea. I really a good dancer. Music therapy is just fun. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you're beating on a drum or shaking a maraca, you're just having genuinely a good time. And so it really is just fun to see the interaction. It's one of the classes where a parent can come, 
be with her child and actually experience the class experience with them. The development of fine and gross motor skills and cognitive skills and social skills occur within the classroom. That happens through obstacle courses, through art, singing, and dancing. Particularly our adult classes, some of the participants have been together for years and really rely on that for a means of social interaction. So being able to come to our adult classes and meet with their friends once a week is, is really a lifeline for them. I love to play my clarinet a lot. And I play about 12 years. And I've been taking lessons. One of my favorite events that we have is a holiday party. We have the bell choir is amazing where everybody's up on stage ringing bells and enjoying arts and crafts. Um, but it really is all about Santa showing up. It's a great place for um, parents to get a great photo for their uh, holiday cards. It's a safe place. It's an environment where nobody has to feel threatened or judged. Children are all dressed up and, and ready for the holidays and just makes it fun. I think the Down Syndrome Connection they really brought in a, a sense of community uh, with the events. You get to talk with other parents. It's um, a mentorship really that's you, you have all, all these parents to bounce ideas from and get ideas from. I think the biggest changes are attitude that people have now realized that there's more potential with our children instead of just um, taking them home and loving them. They're out in the community more. Uh, they're changing lives everywhere, especially in the adult arena. My name is Joseph Vaughn. I work for the Down Syndrome Connection. I'm an administrative assistant helper they shine in all the different things that they have done throughout the year. It's just, yeah, they're just, they've got a great group of people there. I, don't know what, I just don't know what to say because I just love this place. There's nobody like us. Our, our, we are very widespread. Although we're called the Down Syndrome Connection of the Bay Area, it's kind of a misnomer because we are reaching much wider than the Bay Area. My thrill is when I first meet these brand new parents. They come in here for the first time and they're so frightened or devastated and they leave with hope. Um, and when they keep coming back to watch their growth is just, um, that's why I still do the work I do. Down Syndrome Connection Day 2, Team Jen, Jen and Jen, take one. What's a great day for me? Yeah, when you say this is a great day. This is a great day. I just had a great day just a few minutes ago. Ella came, I, we were walking out of the party and Ella was over there and she wanted me to pick her up and she goes, I'm happy. And she gives me this big hug and she wouldn't let go. She was just holding me. It was just, I love that when they're just, it's so spontaneous and she just does that because she loves me. A great day for me is when I get to work with students in the classroom, um, with paraprofessionals, with the team, um, with parents, and everybody's on the same page with what the goals are. One thing we do like to do is go to the park. Um, Ella's a major climber. She does things that I would never <laughs> imagine her to be able to do. She outperforms Ava sometimes at the park, and um, that's a good day is when everybody's playing and playing nice together and not fighting. <laughs> I mean, a great day is when we get a great text or a, a message from his aide at kindergarten. He's fully included, with all his typical peers at kindergarten, and his aide writes us these texts every one, you know, once or twice a week just saying what an amazing day he's had and that his, the, the other kids cheer him along the monkey bars with his assistance. And that, that's about as good as it can get for me when I hear how good he's doing. I can possibly put into words how amazing. From the time we all looked through that window at him, there was just an overwhelming feeling from each person looking in that window. And this has been included in films. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>